Good morning and welcome to this edition of Audio App. Uh, we're not going to talk agronomy today. Today we're talking with Peter Schramm. Peter is the seed purchasing manager here at Bex Hybrid. Peter, tell us a little bit about what you do and what your role is. Yeah, my day-to-day job uh, can be pretty different. Uh, my main role is to uh, allow growers to, to price their seed beans, seed wheat, and seed corn with us. So handle that and then uh, uh, help develop a risk management plan to, to manage our price risk associated with, with purchasing those uh, that grain. You also farm, right? Yes, yep. And then you have some clients you consult with as well as far as the risk management portfolio. Yes, I do. Uh, I have a consulting business and, and do brokerage and advisory, but uh, it really starts out with uh, developing a break-even spreadsheet and just, just helping farmers make good financial decisions to to maximize their, their income on their farm. So right now, the big financial decision as it relates, unfortunately, to this, uh, this spring is, what do I do moving forward as it relates to planting corn, um, the prevent plant? When you came in this morning, uh, you said something, it really it shocked me, because um, I wasn't aware of it, but you shared something about the June 5th planting date versus June 25th. Can you give me some more detail there? Sure, uh, I think there's a misconception that on June 5th, you have to decide or you have a period of time that you need to decide if you're going to take prevent planting or not. Uh, the reality is uh, you can decide any time between June 5th and June 25th if you want to take prevent planting. You just need to, to notify your ins- insurance company that you intend to take prevent planting in that window, which, uh, you know, that's great. It's not forcing a decision on, on June 5th. So what, what is that June 5th date then? What's that What's that date? The June 5th date is, is a date when your coverage level uh, starts to drop. Basically, uh, um, there's a spring guarantee that's calculated, and I'm, I'm speaking towards a revenue mm-hmm. RP type policy. Uh, that spring guarantee actually decreases 1% per day if you plant past the prevent planting date, which, which in Indiana is June 5th. So market prices are going up right now. How does that impact the conversation and the decision as, as it, it relates to Peter Schramm's farm or the clients you you are talking to? Sure. Higher prices, the market's trying to incentivize farmers to plant corn or, or soybeans. Um, um, and the reality is if you purchased a, an RP policy, your guarantee potentially is higher. Um, the way the policy is written, it's the greater of the spring price or fall price which is determined in October. Um, granted, you know, corn's gone up in this example uh, pretty substantially, and it's above the spring price. We're not guaranteed that it's gonna be higher in the fall, but it's higher today. So the market's trying to incentivize farmers to plant corn. With that in mind, what are, what are you telling your clients and what are you deciding on your farm as it relates to the markets and the Prevent Plant program? Um, I developed a, a, a quick spreadsheet you know, just so farmers can understand, number one, how their insurance policy works and how that guarantee specifically could work. And then also, uh, it's kind of, it helps you develop or look at different yield scenarios because yields are definitely going to be lower. Um, and then think of some things you can you can budget and do differently. Um, we probably don't need to fertilize for 220 bushel corn. So maybe we can cut out starter and, and, and cut back on our end rates to save some costs. Um, but what it also does is it evaluates if I take prevent planting at $350 an acre, am I really better off? Uh, which scenario am I better off? And, and what I'm finding is we're better off trying to plant. And it, it's pretty substantial. It's $100, $200 an acre uh, in some cases. So being that you and I work for a seed company, <laughs> that probably yeah. sounds a little bit self-serving, Peter. Um, how do we how do we advise this so that they understand? Really, this is the recommendation you're going to apply on your farm, right? And this yeah. is the recommendation that you're making for your clients because you feel like it's the best agronomic decision for them. Is that right? Well, it's the best financial decision. It's not necessarily the best agronomic. Well, I think it's the best agronomic decision as well. Um, we're farmers. We we want to have crops growing on our ground versus weeds or or mm-hmm. whatnot. Um, it, it's what we do. Uh, I think we realize that the market needs us to to plant something, um, um, but you know if you're if you're really honest with yourself and evaluate your costs, and that's that's what this attempt yeah. is. Um, right now, the numbers point to planting a crop. Yes, it okay. does, and I think there's a misconception or misunderstanding. 
you know, that our guarantee is going down, our guarantee potential is going higher, and that, that helps substantially. I mean, it's kind of a security blanket in a way, right? The fact that these grain prices are going up and the guarantee, it, it still incentivizes them to try to get a crop in the ground. Is, am I hearing it right? Yeah, it's incentivizing them to get a crop in the ground and, and try and do a good job marketing it as well, you know. So as you as you start thinking about um, what is the number one thing a grower should do right now, and you mentioned this when you shared uh, with me before we started recording, what's the number one thing they should be doing right now? Talk to your crop insurance agent. Understand the facts. Um, uh, um, an agent that I work with, crop insurance specialist, put, put together a great Q&A piece. I think we'll post that, Jim. I think it's just it just highlights some answers to a lot of questions but but talk to your agent and understand how your policy works and uh, just just work your numbers yep. you know gather as much information as you can because the decision will be different for every farm right um, and everybody may have different levels of break even and risk management that they want to incur and that's all great but to your point just gather as much information as you possibly can to help make a, an informed decision based really on numbers right yeah, I guess I'm probably an analytical person, um, and I've, I've got to look at the numbers, but I, I think being honest with my numbers has helped make the decision easy, and I, I think it's also alleviated some concern that I don't need to decide on June 5th whether or not I'm going to plant or not. I can, you know, if the weather um, isn't conducive to planting and I, I need to take prevent planting or or switch to soybeans, I can I can make that decision. It's, as you have the conversations with your clients, what's the decision that most of them are making um, today as it relates to this decision? They're farmers. They want to they want to plant the crop, and and uh, they're going to do everything in their power to to do that. So. Yeah. So it's, and when so I have conversations with folks as well, it seems like they're they're sticking with it. They're trying. To your point, they want to grow a crop. Um, they're going to stick with corn through the middle of June, and then and then decide maybe they switch to soybeans at that point right. in time. Right. So. All right. And that's kind of what the numbers point them to today, correct? Yes. Yes, so, it sure does. Perfect. Great. Peter, thanks for uh, the, the insight. I know it is a, again, it's a challenging time, difficult decisions, but all the information we can add is, is just helpful to help us make the right decisions. So appreciate your time. That's it for today. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Mm-hmm.